Please turn to Habakkuk. It's on page 785. <clears throat> the book of Habakkuk. Well, depending on how you want to say it, you could say Habakkuk. Habakkuk. You could say Habakkuk. <coughs> All different ways you could say this book. The book of Habakkuk. If we were to sum up these three chapters from this professional prophet, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that term in a moment, there were several professional prophets and he was one of them. We could sum up the entire book by saying, this is a book where the prophet questions God. Which is unusual for prophets because usually prophets are the ones who are getting messages from God and delivering them to people. But this prophet, Habakkuk, was going the other way. <laughs> he was the one initiating the conversation. He was the one who was questioning. And he had some pretty big questions. And my guess is that every one of us have had or will have exactly the same questions in principle that Habakkuk asked God. Habakkuk was, as I said, a professional prophet. There was about half a dozen of these guys mentioned as people who became attached to the temple and were paid out of the temple treasury as prophets. They were supported by the temple proceeds. We find reference to one of the other prophets. His name is Zechariah. And by the way, don't ever call him Zechariah. There is no book of Zechariah. Anyway, um, it's Zechariah. And we find reference to him being paid in Zechariah... Uh, is it chapter 10, verse 12, where he says, I went to get my wages and they meted out to me 30 pieces of silver. Of course, he says that because that then becomes a prophecy about the betrayal that Judas would inflict on Christ. But he was also a professional prophet, somebody who was paid simply to pray, simply to wait on God, simply to deliver whatever God gave them for the people. I want us to go to Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17. Let's read chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 17, 18 and 19 to introduce this guy because I want you to see the heart Habakkuk had for the Lord and it is my hope that I will have this heart and it's my hope as pastor of this church that we together will have this kind of heart. This is what it says. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. The produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Wow. That's where this guy's coming from. Jeff mentioned over the offering this morning that the people who returned after this episode knew hardship, and, and he wasn't kidding. And here we get an indication of some of the hardship they were about to endure. And yet the prophet says, though all of this happens, I will still trust God. Not only will I trust him, I will love him, I will worship him, I will rejoice. And I'm going to put this down as a challenge to me and a challenge to us that no matter what happens, though the fig tree does not blossom, which is no great loss as far as I'm concerned, Though everything goes wrong, we will still rejoice and we will still trust God. So <clears throat> here we have Habakkuk, the prophet, asking these questions. So that's a bit of a foundational thing. Verse 2, here's the question. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? <laughs> Sorry, I just relate. Sorry, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> and you will not hear. Or cry to you violence, or another way of putting that, or cry to you, this is unfair. Or in modern vernacular, this sucks. And you will not save. Verse 3, why do you make me see iniquity 
And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralysed and justice never goes forth. And the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. (coughs) Hey, pretty reasonable questions. Here's this guy going, hang on, God, this isn't the way it's supposed to work. Come with me to chapter 2, verse 1. And I want you to see something about these questions that he had. He knew God, and he knew God was good and could be trusted. The second point was he he had questions and quite possibly even doubts about God's character. Here's the third point we need to understand. Habakkuk was prepared to wait. He was prepared to wait for God's answer. And God says, yet... Habakkuk, I I just need you to know that while I'm punishing my people for abandoning me, I will get to the Chaldeans, the Babylonians. I will. I will deal with them. Don't you worry about that. I will deal with them. But the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God's saying, I'm in control of this nation, this nation, these world events. Ultimately, Habakkuk, what you don't know and you can't understand, chapter 1, verse 5, is this. Ultimately, one day, the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. 